Okay, so without further ado, our first speaker for today is Manuela Bischetti, who's a postdoc at the Astronomical Observatory in Trieste, who will be telling us about um, root absorption line outflows at high redshift. Yes, hello. Let me just share my screen. You should be able to see it now. Um, can you can you confirm if you see it, please? Yeah, yeah it looks okay. Great. great. Okay. Uh, so um, today I will talk about uh, quasar-driven outflows uh, back to the book of reionization. So. Uh, um, to this uh, purpose, uh, I will focus uh, on uh, uh, luminous uh, quasars. So uh, let me just uh, quickly recall why they are primary targets to hunt for uh, powerful uh, supermassive black hole driven outflows. Uh, you see from this uh, plot of the mass at rate as a function of the AGM volumetric luminosity uh, for uh, outflows uh, revealed in different uh, gas phases uh, that uh, essentially uh, for all phases the largest values are observed in uh, uh, luminous quasars. Uh, unfortunately, uh, essentially no redshift six uh, uh, points are on this uh, plot and uh, um, for what concerns the ionized phase, uh, outflows in luminous quasars have been observed uh, up to redshift uh, 3, 4, uh, for example, uh, uh, in the WISH uh, quasar project. But uh, uh, for what uh, uh, concerns the cold gas phase, so the direct fuel for star formation, uh, essentially what we know so far is uh, mostly limited to uh, low moderate luminosity AGN, AGN in the universe and only a few examples exist uh, at high redshift. Uh, but uh, today I would like to go back to the uh, reionization epoch and uh, uh, we know uh, that uh, a, a feedback mechanism must have been in place at such early epochs because we observe that massive quiescent galaxies are already in place at redshift 3 and uh, even larger redshift. And uh, um, as this uh, feedback occurred in uh, a quasar redshift, uh, let's say, 6, um, so far uh, we have... Uh, uh, one uh, clear detection of an outflow in the uh, cold gas phase uh, in uh, Rashid 6 uh, quasar by Maiolino et al, Ciccone et al, and uh, um, several uh, works reporting no detection of uh, outflows or low significant detection. So for this reason, uh, last year uh, we decided to uh, go for the first systematic investigation of the occurrence of agent-driven outflows in uh, the first quasar population. So essentially what we did was uh, uh, collecting uh, all uh, quasars with available ARMA observation of the uh, carbon-2 emission line and uh, uh, we assembled a sample assembled a sample of 48 quasar with uh, uh, volumetric luminosity of 10 to the 47 on average per second in a redshift range between uh, 5 and 7. And uh, uh, by uh, stacking the uh, carbon-2 spectra of this uh, whole uh, sample, we found that cold hot flows in the early universe are actually there. As you can see from this uh, uh, stacked spectrum, uh, the uh, carbon-2 profile shows uh, uh, high uh, velocity wings, which extend uh, up to a velocity of uh, 1000 km per second associated with uh, outflowing gas. And uh, um, 
we also found that the uh, luminosity of these broad uh, wings uh, correlates with that of the uh, quasar. So essentially, uh, this identifies the AGN as the main driving mechanism of the high luminosity uh, carbon-2 emission. So uh, this is an agreement with what found the lower redshift uh, that uh, high luminosity quasars accelerate the most powerful outflows. And uh, uh, by stacking the ALMA data cubes, um, it was also possible to derive the average extent of these uh, uh, cold outflows. And uh, as you can see from this uh, uh, velocity integrated map of the high velocity carbon emission, uh, the uh, typical radius of the C2 outflow is uh, uh, about three kiloparsecs. So these uh, uh, winds extend on galactic scale. Um, we also tried to characterize the impact of these uh, uh, outflows. Uh, and uh, uh, we derived the typical uh, neutral mass outflow rate of the order of 100, 200 solar masses per year, which, uh, uh, as you can see from these uh, uh, pink stars here, uh, are lower than uh, what expected from uh, local relation. So these uh, uh, may be uh, telling us that cold outflows at high redshift uh, might be less efficient in removing gas than uh, in uh, uh, local AGN. But uh, uh, let me uh, focus now on uh, what uh, uh, would be the um, a good observational strategy to detect uh, uh, carbon-2 outflows uh, at shift 6. So uh, for this purpose, uh, we um, built some more calm observations of uh, carbon-2 emission from uh, a system uh, consisted of a galaxy plus a outflow. And uh, we, um, let's say, observed this system with two different array configuration, a low resolution, uh, point arc second and the high resolution configuration with the beam of 0.2 arc second and uh, um, to constrain the uh, galaxy and outflow uh, C2 parameters essentially um, uh, we use the information I've just uh, uh, show you uh, before from the stack and uh, um, uh, we required uh, the same exposure time for the low resolution and the high uh, um, angular resolution observations. So this uh, translates uh, into the same uh, RMS sensitivity uh, for a uh, uh, unit of ALMA beam. And uh, however, if you uh, look at these uh, two spectra uh, corresponding uh, to the low resolution, high angular resolution, you see that while high uh, velocity emission is uh, observed uh, for the uh, low resolution configuration, essentially no uh, high velocity winds are detected at the high resolution. And this is uh, because, uh, oops, sorry, uh, this is because uh, for a given extraction aperture, uh, the high resolution observations are noisier. And uh, as you can see here, uh, the uh, same wings uh, um, get lost uh, in the uh, noise. And uh, the, 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 same is, the same result uh, can be seen also in the ALMA uh, simulated maps. And uh, in the high resolution, the outflow uh, result is resolved with uh, low significance in uh, uh, many beams, so essentially cannot be uh, detected. And uh, this is telling us that tailored ALMA observations are needed uh, in order to uh, detect and uh, characterize the cold outflows. But uh, let me uh, now move to uh, another kind of uh, outflows uh, as uh, proved, uh, um, as traced by the ionized gas phase. 
And to, to do so, uh, let me introduce the XQR theory sample, uh, the ultimate shooter legacy survey of quasar redshift uh, between 5.8 and 6.6, uh, which is an ISO large program with VLT uh, targeting 30 quasars uh, selected to uh, be luminous in the J magnitude. And uh, um, these are deep, high resolution observations, and uh, uh, most of the sample has already been observed with high signal to noise. And uh, uh, I would like to focus on ionized half flows in uh, XQR theory quasars as uh, traced by broad absorption lines. And uh, uh, you see here an example of an extruder spectrum from XUR30. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, broad uh, blue shifted absorption are uh, visible um, um, blue world of the carbon-4 and silicon-4 uh, ions. The uh, first step to identify BAL quasars is uh, um, to uh, derive the intrinsic continuum emission. And uh, uh, this can be uh, done by creating for each quasar a, a template, which is based on uh, uh, lower redshift sources uh, selected to match the uh, carbon pore velocity shift and the uh, colors uh, of the um, excretory quasar. And uh, you see this uh, template uh, here by the uh, magenta curve. And essentially, uh, this uh, allows uh, to uh, derive a residual spectrum and uh, identify the uh, broad absorption line features. So uh, you can see here, uh, this uh, um, residual spectrum as a uh, function of the uh, velocity uh, corresponding with respect to the uh, carbon-4, silicon-4, and nitrogen-5 uh, um, peak. And uh, uh, broad absorption line features are indicated in uh, green. And uh, uh, you see uh, in all these uh, examples that uh, BAL are observed in uh, uh, several, in, in different ions, carbon-4, silicon-4, nitrogen, although uh, for uh, uh, most sources, uh, uh, the high velocity uh, BAL falls blue of lemon alpha, so uh, in a, a strongly absorbed uh, spectral region. And uh, uh, these uh, BAL reach uh, a very high velocity of the order of uh, 20,000 to 50,000 kilometers per second. And uh, uh, to uh, put this uh, in a wider context, you can see here the distributions of the uh, valency index uh, maximum and minimum velocity for the carbon-4 uh, BAL in the XR3 quasars uh, compared to uh, BAL in uh, the Sloan Digital Sky Survey at lower redshift, uh, essentially between redshift 1.5 and 4. And uh, uh, it's uh, evident from all uh, the, this, this distribution, see, for example, the maximum velocity here, that uh, BAL outflows in XQR30 show higher uh, velocities. Uh, with respect to lower redshift quasars. And uh, um, although these two samples show uh, similar volumetric luminosities. Um, we uh, also uh, found that uh, the BAL quasars are common in redshift 6, uh, and we found uh, it essentially a 30% fraction of strong BAL, which uh, increasing to 50% uh, by including also weak BAL, uh, while uh, for comparison, the fraction in, in SDSS uh, is 10-50% uh, for the old uh, quasars, and uh, it slightly increases uh, to 20% uh, in color, ma color matched uh, sources, essentially uh, selected in this uh, region uh, by uh, 
comparing uh, uh, the similar uh, rest frame colors uh, in Redshift 6 uh, quasar and uh, the corresponding uh, SDSS colors. And uh, um, so this uh, high BEL fraction of 30 to 50% rest, uh, Redshift 6 uh, is uh, telling us that BEL quasar may represent the uh, dominant accretion mode uh, at Redshift 6. So uh, just to uh, wrap up, um, I've shown you that supermassive driven outflows uh, are uh, detected uh, back to the reionization epoch in both the uh, cold and ionized gas phase. Uh, um, C2 outflows, uh, as uh, traced by uh, the stacking of ALMA observations, are common. And uh, although uh, tailored ALMA observations are needed to properly detect and characterize them, and uh, uh, BAL outflows uh, seem uh, to be also uh, common with a high fraction of about uh, 30 to 50 percent. And uh, uh, JWST uh, will allow us to have a breakthrough uh, for what concerns uh, the detection of outflows in the early universe, because it will allow us to probe the oxygen tree counterparts of these outflows and uh, uh, probe their size, their energetics, uh, and so to uh, assess uh, their impact in uh, the host galaxy interstellar medium and even on uh, circumgalactic scales. Uh, that's all for me, thank you. Thank you very much. So we have time uh, only for one question, and it's from Valentina asking, why is the same observing time chosen for the low resolution and high resolution observations? Um, because, um, how can I say, um, it's, uh, it's to explain that even with uh, the same sensitivity as like different studies with uh, uh, reaching comparable <laughs> sensitivities uh, get uh, conflict results. So in this case, uh, uh, like in our work, we detect the outflows, but other odors uh, uh, essentially uh, do not see these uh, high-velocity wings. Uh. So this was to uh, show that even with uh, comparable sensitivity, the uh, configuration can uh, uh, highly impact on the detection of the outflow. Thank you. I'm sure there will be more questions uh, online. <laughs>